Hello. We are gathered here today to answer the eternal question. Why do some estheticians have really crappy skin? But first, can we just take a moment and appreciate that this is the best that my skin has looked in probably years? And that's not just the, the crappy camera. It's actually like, okay. I am a professional, non-practicing esthetician. Typically, except for on extra special days that are totally random, has crappy skin. And I have tried everything to combat this. They say that if you have crappy skin, you have to do all these things. You have to take these pills. You have to use this special cream. You have to subscribe to this dubious skincare box that I guess comes to your house and nobody has ever had anything good to say about. Um, you go to see your esthetician. You go to see your uh, dermatologist. Your dermatologist says do all these things. Um, one of those things is you go see an allergist, right? And you cut out the foods the allergist tells you to. Nothing works. The thing is, some people just have crappy skin. There's a lot more reasons than just cutting out foods or using the right face wash. But since we're talking about face wash, we're going to talk about what I'm doing right now that apparently worked at least one day out of this season to um, deal with combination skin, which is both oily and dry, in a very dry Michigan winter. This includes the lowdown on the $90 skincare which again, you don't need to spend $90 on skincare. That's, that's exorbitant. Anyway, so let's talk about this because this is something that everyone has to deal with. And while we are talking about this $90 face wash and everything else that I have lined up over here that I've been using, we will cover what you can do to not be dry and dehydrated. We always look more wrinkly when we're dry and dehydrated. And also why some estheticians have crappy skin. Anyway, so this is the $90 face wash. I will hold it still instead of just like brandishing at you so you can actually see it. So this Avant, it's backwards on my camera. The brand name is Avant. We talked about this before. Um, again, I don't know why it is a $90 face wash. I don't know if that's because of the brand name or because of what's in it, but I'm guessing it's not because of what in it, what is in it because I looked at the ingredients and it's pretty general. However, I have been looking for a dupe for this already and I have found nothing so far. The closest I've found was, um, I think Garnier's um, Micellar Water for dry skin and it has like rosehip oil in it or something, but it still doesn't have all of the key ingredients that this has, so I would not call that a dupe. Um, but anyway, this guy, we're gonna mess around with. This is a Micellar Water. I said I've been using these. I don't only use a Micellar Water, but these are great for anyone who has dry skin, dehydrated skin, um, any, anything that doesn't need like a heavy washing. And even sometimes if you do, this has oil and water based ingredients in it. And that just means that they mix the both things that they thought you would need. Oil is okay for oily skin and for oily combination skin. Because if you cut out all your oil, this is like skincare 101. This is the first thing they tell you to do. If you cut out all your oil and you use all your oil free products, your face is going to think, gee, all of my oil is gone. I better make more. And then it makes more. And you're like, oh crap, I guess my face wash isn't working. You scrub dub dub, right? Oh, geez, that didn't work. I better make more. You don't do that. Don't do that to your skin. Your skin is going to keep making more oil. You're losing the game. So this has oil in it and I have to keep shaking it because it also has water in it. But this is nice. These micellar waters aren't going to work for everybody. I didn't think they were going to work for me, but this one is actually really nice for winter. I would not be able to get away with this in the summer. But with this, what you do, I guess this is supposedly a French thing, but you put it on a cotton ball. It's basically like you use it like you would a toner and you just rub it all over your face. And um, I'm starting here on my chin because that's where I feel the dirtiest all the time because I have hormonal acne that just doesn't quit. 
That is one of the reasons that this esthetician has crappy skin. So you want to go around, you want to get all of the places that um, are dirty. You want to get your entire face just like you would a normal face wash. Um, and you would be shocked and appalled at what comes off on your cotton ball when you're using any of these. I also have one for um, very oily skin. It's much less expensive than this. Anyway, this is nice because um, it takes off your makeup, even if it's waterproof mascara that never comes off for anything. And I can use this in my eye area because it has all sorts of things that are good for the eye area. If you're using one of these that is not nourishing, if it's for oily skin, don't use it in your eye area. You can get everywhere else just really fast. Bangs. Look at that. Even my forehead is okay. This literally never happens, you guys. Bangs. And that's all. And I'm not going to show you how disgusting that cotton ball is because you will never talk to me again, even though I wash my face like regularly. That's this guy. Cotton ball is so gross. It's because of, of the makeup also. But so this is nice. Like I said, if you have more questions about it, let me know <clears throat> and we can talk about it. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for one of these that's less expensive that has hyaluronic acid and the other things in it, like glycerin. Those are the two main products I'm looking, uh, ingredients I'm looking for. And a dupe, I will let you know. I think what happened with last night, which culminated in me having good skin, <clears throat> is I was prescribed um, like the generic version of Retin-A for my never ending cystic acne. And I have like this huge cyst, you can't see it which is amazing, you can't see it right. This is called Differin Gel. And as you can see, I've pretty much used it up. My new insurance won't cover it. They think because I'm over the age of 18 that I have no use for an acne cream, even though it was prescribed for adult acne because I'm an esthetician with crappy skin. These guys don't pop up as often as they used to. That's because when I went to my allergist, he said, stop eating dairy. I was like, I can't stop eating dairy, I love cheese. So I stopped eating dairy. Also, I stopped eating gluten even though I love a good French bread and I just don't eat it anymore. And my skin doesn't hurt as much. Like you get to a point where it's not about what it looks like. It's about the fact that it hurts to exist in your face. And once you get to that point, you kind of think maybe I should stop eating the food. You know what I mean? So um, with that combined with this, I don't have as much acne anymore. Um, I'm almost out of this. You only use this at night. Uh, this is different gel. Like I said, you can get this um, over the counter now. It's $20 or $30. Um, makes me sad that my doctor is prescribing it. They won't cover it anymore, but it is what it is. Anyway, I have this big old cyst here. You don't mess with cystic acne. You, you, you don't mess with cystic acne. Like, unless you're a dermatologist. <laughs> or a professional esthetician, then you can mess with it. Even if you're an esthetician, you're not supposed to mess with it. But if it's on your own face, you know what you're doing. So anyway, I messed with it because I'm a professional esthetician, got a little bit out just to release some pressure and um, put this on, but I only put it on right in this area because it's where I was having a problem. I didn't put it on the rest of my face, which I normally do just because that's what you do. You just you wanna take care of yourself. And I woke up with less redness and peeling, like in this area, because I didn't use this there. I use it as a spot treatment, even though it's an all over the face treatment. That's something you have to start doing if you have problematic skin, esthetician or not. So I did that. Um, you only do that at night. And then, you know, obviously you should wear sunscreen if you're going to be using something like that, but then your doctor will tell you that. This, is the next thing you're gonna want if you have dehydrated or dry or Michigan winter skin. This is my all time favorite, the rock star ingredient, hyaluronic acid. Just chilling out by itself in a bottle. This was like six bucks from the ordinary and I can't live without it. Like I have it stockpiled. So you know, you probably wanna shake it. I shake everything whether you're supposed to or not. You don't need that much. This is a ton, you can see it's full to about here. I'm going to use about half of what's in there. 
Okay? And it's like a very liquidy gel. Yeah. And by the way, this is totally gross, but um, so your body, you're just putting this all over your face, especially where you've got like little wrinklies or especially dry skin or like eczema that's like cured my eczema that was around my nose, which is fantastic. But anyway, your body naturally produces hyaluronic acid in certain situations, in certain amounts that are appropriate for the situation at hand, whatever that happens to be. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I just know that the body does it. Um, I don't think I was paying attention that day in skin class and I probably should have been. I didn't know then this was going to be my favorite ingredient. Anyway, so really gross factoid is that one of the reason that one of the reasons that people are dying from COVID the body's like, I'm going to mass produce this um, skin saving chemical, but in the lungs and then you choke on it and you die. Like you can't breathe. That's why people can't breathe. It's because of hyaluronic acid that your body has produced. That freaked me out, but also I was like, man, if we could produce it when we wanted to and not in our lungs, that would be really a boom for like us as human beings, right? Anyway, this stuff's great because um, when it's not in your lungs and it is like sterile and in a thing that you can put on your face, um, it holds, well, it always does this, but it holds up to, I believe, a thousand percent its weight in water. So it's grabbing water from your environment and bring it into your skin, which plumps up everything and takes care of like really dry chapped skin. It's great. I love it. It works for pretty much everyone in a lot of different situations. Um, one ca caveat to that is that if you have, um, you know, a really dry environment, run a humidifier, <laughs> it'll work better. It sounds kooky. I've got one right here. You can probably hear it. It's hanging out today with me and it's hanging out with my plants and we all love it. It has been saving us this winter. So yes, make sure your environment has a little bit of something in it. It helps. It doesn't work without it. It finds, it finds moisture that doesn't exist. Anyway, so I put on an eye cream after this. If you're watching this, you need an eye cream. Mostly because I know my demographic, but also because like personally, I personally started using an eye cream at age 15. So like maybe 14, and you know, so many people I hear being like, well, I'll get to that when I'm in my thirties or forties. It's too late. It's too late. We're an eye cream. It's a threat. This is Strivectin. I've been using this eye cream since I was like, well, 14 or 15. I think I started with a dove. I've been using this since I was 15 or 16. So um, this actually works. Without this, I, I look 10 years older. And you just want to put it like right obviously in the eye area, but then also where you've got those little crow's feet and you want to put it like maybe where you've got your uh, cheekbones going on. This particular eye cream is fantastic. It's very emollient. It's made to soak into your, um, into your skin. Not all skincare does that, which we will get to. All of these things are formulated with their molecule size to actually soak into your skin instead of sitting on top where they do nothing. Or they do limited, they have limited reasons for existing at that point. Um, this is nice. It increases collagen. I have seen it work. Um, when we get into like, if I, if I ever tell you about like specific treatments and stuff that I'm doing, we'll talk about this again. Um, but this is amazing. This brand actually works. So if you are in the market for skincare that costs a little extra, but then actually, you know, it's going to do its job. This is the one to check out first. It is both upside down and backwards. There you go. Now it's just backwards. You need to learn how to read backwards if you don't already, which I'm sure you do. You're an adult. Stravectin. They've got lots of different stuff. I like it a lot. I would use only their stuff if I could, but again, it's not the best for acneic skin, which man, we've got this guy. Hence, we talked about this. I got this in my box. I wouldn't have ever bought this for myself. This moisturizer, the next thing is a moisturizer. You put the eye cream on under the moisturizer because this is a treatment. You put on your treatment, then you put on your moisturizer. We're going to do this guy today because this is what I was sent in my box of charm box for February. I only need a tiny amount. You only need a tiny amount. So a little, like it really doesn't look like much. It looks like, girl, you're going to need more. Tiny amount. This has glycerin in it. For any of you who like observe the back of your skincare, you know that glycerin goes a long way. 
Um, look at this. I'm putting this here, definitely up here, down here, right? Chin, nose, get everything that's skin, obviously. But like, don't forget someplace just because you're like, eh, I'm not concerned with that. Even the neck. Even if you're in your 20s, yes, you need to take care of your neck, just like you need to be using eye cream. See? All of that covered all of that space. And this is nice because, again, it has hyaluronic acid in it. Uh, hyaluronic acid is life. We have used it in three products now. It's grabbing all that good water from the humidifier that just my skin would not grab otherwise. We have used hyaluronic. I think this has hyaluronic acid in it. Yes, I just uh, turned off the camera to double check, and yes, this has four types of hyaluronic acid in it. That certainly explains why some hyaluronic acid formulations work better than others. Like, for example, I used to work with the Aveda line because that's who I trained with, and like, there's this amazing. Um, they had, they used to have this eye cream that, like, I was obsessed with that for some reason they got rid of because they always get rid of their best stuff, which is, I don't understand that business model, but it is what it is. Anyway, their eye cream um, that they had, you could put it on anyone and the wrinkles would just disappear. Maybe not like the really deep set ones, but like the fine lines and like the beginning wrinkles definitely would. So anyway, good stuff in here. So anyway, now we have used, or I have used, and you have observed three different things with hyaluronic acid. We've got this, um, what do they call these? Micellar water. I'm sorry, I, these are new to me. Like new within the past five years to me. Um, but anyway, so got this micellar water that has hyaluronic acid in it. And that is good again for a variety of skin types, probably on the drier side. Um, we've got this actual just hyaluronic acid. I think it's got, it's got B5 in it too, but like it's a hyaluronic acid. Um, it's good for all skin types. We've got Daily Greens, from pharmacy, oil-free gel moisturizer with moringa and papaya, which also has four different types of hyaluronic acid. Obviously, there's a trend happening here, and it's a trend that's good for most different types of people, but obviously, if you've got extremely oily skin, then maybe limit it to one thing, like this guy or the pharmacy, not this. Um, but obviously, like, ask someone in person, like, who knows what they're talking about in that case. Anyway, so at that point, you have seen that I have cleansed my skin. I have put on a serum. I have put on an eye cream, and I put on a moisturizer. What else could we do? Well, because um, I'm extra sometimes, at least when it comes to skincare, because I have to be. It was stuffed into my head at an early age to take care of your skin. It's the only skin that you get. Very much like teeth, by the way. I would rather have bad skin than bad teeth. And I'm not saying anything about bad teeth in general. My teeth are definitely not the best, but at least like I floss. Um, just, just word to the wise as an esthetician, not as a dentist. Please floss also. Anyway, moving on from that little ADD moment. Maybe we'll talk about ADD sometime. The next thing I put on my face right now, because it's winter and, um, I can put all of that on and it has hyaluronic acid, but honestly, there's so little moisture in Michigan in the winter. Any of you in the North will understand this, that like it's, the, the air is going to suck all of the moisture right back out of your skin, unless you protect yourself. <laughs> Gotta protect yourself. So I put on this $3 Pons that grandma used to use. Doesn't smell like grandma though, it smells pretty fresh. Take this. It's also a nice opportunity to do a facial massage if you do a facial massage. I take a big old dollop, okay? Maybe not this big because I'm wearing like a top right now and I can't go all the way down in here for you. But um, like I could, but I'm not going to because let's be real, the world has creeps, especially the internet has creeps. And take some, put that right on over. And I only do this in the winter, and I only started doing this recently, and I can tell when I've done this and when I have not. At the end of the day, um, maybe I'll have like some fine lines if I don't do this, but if I do this, then typically they're practically non-existent. I put it right in places that you already moisturized, pop it on, nice and thick layer on the neck too. 
And then I like to take my time and just massage it in. And you may or may not have, this is what it looks like, even if you're like 21 and you're getting a facial massage, by the way. This isn't me being old. This is just skin being skin. And you massage it in. Um, you can use one of those little rollers if you have one of those like gemstone rollers. I have a um, rose quartz one. I don't use it as much, but it's nice for relaxation, right? You just put it on in and you can just rub it on too. I'm just doing this because um, it's what I do daily. And that's kind of what we're talking about. The point to this product is less the facial massage and more what it does chemically for your skin. So if you are looking at any product that's made with mineral oil, you're going to see that it says something about protecting your skin. That's because unlike everything that we've used up to this point, this is not formulated to soak into your skin. This is inert. Inert is a fancy professional word for it's not going to, it's probably, you're not going to react to it most likely. You're not going to have an allergic reaction to it. It doesn't really do anything except for sit there. And the reason we use this in skincare, the reason it's like the number one thing that you find in skincare anywhere is because it sits on top of your skin. Its molecules are too big to soak into your skin. It sits on top. And that's why we're able to use it to massage in because it lasts longer on top of the skin. It's not going anywhere except for it's slipping and sliding around, which sounds disgusting. But the whole point to this is that while you are putting it on your skin, it is sitting on top of everything that you actually want there. The expensive stuff, the pharmacy, the 90 something dollar face wash. All of it has done its magic. Yes, this is a facial massage thing too. And because it's sitting on there, protecting everything that you just put into your skin, you're not gonna be as dehydrated. And you can do this exact same thing with your body in the winter. If you have really dry skin on your body, then I recommend using um, just straight up jojoba oil on your skin. Or if you have like a really fancy um, like body moisturizer, you can use that too. Um, if you saw my last video, you know that I'm using something that has this in it, but like other stuff too. Um, anyway, so you can use the jojoba oil on your skin, especially if you have like um, really dry feet or something, and then you go back over it with just like this, ver like the body version of this, or Olay. Pons is good for it. Olay is good for it. Um, Jergens is good for it. Um, yeah, Nivea, Nivea. How do Americans pronounce that? I don't know. I'm an American and I don't know. How do English speaking people of varying countries pronounce that? Because I would like to know. Like it's a genuine question, please let me know. Anyway, all those brands, they're gonna be good for this. They all have mineral oil, petroleum, petrolatum, and that is what's going to keep your moisture in long-term. Lip balm. This is just one that I got from my BoxyCharm box. So I'm gonna use it because it's great. It has a hobo oil in it. That's my second favorite skincare um, ingredient. So anyway, that's what I, as an esthetician with terrible skin, do in the winter to try and take care of that. Remember, I do use this for acne. Definitely a thing. Something we didn't talk about, but I'll just mention. Sometimes I use this. It's a cheap gel cleanser, just if my skin's like super oil and disgusting. I also have two different types of treatments. I'm doing like facials. I have a facial, like a more traditional one and then um, something a little less traditional. We might talk about this later, but um, daily this is what I do just to try and combat all of that. I have noticed that since I started using, I hate saying this, so I'm gonna avoid it for a second. Okay, gotta finish that sentence now. Since I started using the $90 face wash and also the $30 moisturizer, my skin has improved a lot. Sometimes 
the price matters and sometimes it doesn't, which is exactly why I'm looking for a dupe for that $90 face wash because these people are crazy. So in any case, um, if you have $90 to spend on face wash, please send some to me. Money, not face wash. I'd rather have the money. Um, that's me begging. I'm not ashamed because if you have $90 to spend on face wash, like I want to be in on that life. Anyway, so it works. Um, it's amazing that it works, but it really has made a huge difference. And um, I think that's one of the reasons actually that this is looking better. But the other big reason that estheticians as human beings, and thereby extending this to all human beings, have crappy skin sometimes is hormones. You can cut out your food. You can use the right skincare. You can do literally all these things. I was a raw foodist and it got worse. You know why? I just found out that I have a whole bunch of hormonal things wrong with me. So I'm probably, I'm, what did I say probably? I'm scheduled to have surgery to take care of a bunch of these things. I'll be fine. What I'm really hoping though is that it sorts this out. And we're going to find out. But in any case, until then, I'm suffering in pain and also I've still got this acne like I have had since like my entire life. So um, this stuff does help. Um, this stuff does help, but um, insurance can be a jerk. And we're just gonna see what happens in a few weeks. Hopefully hormones settle down and boy, would that be something to talk about. Anyway, I am now going to take all of these items, put them back where they live and go about my business. Now that I've got nice clean skin, we've got to fix these things, so let's just fix these things. I will see you next time. Bye.